Hey everybody, it is that time of year where we round up the best clubs to be released in 2021. All these selections are based on the golf clubs that I have reviewed this year, so some top draw golf clubs will be missing out. If you don't agree with the selection and you have any other ideas, get down into those comments below and let me know what you think are the best clubs to come out this year. As we go through these videos as well, links to the individual reviews will be popping up in the corner of the video if you did want to check the original out. Now I changed my putter a lot more than I would like to admit, apart from next year, that's a different story, but that's also a different year. But there have been a few standouts in 2021. Odyssey released their new range and the two ball 10 putter was a real standout. The two ball design isn't an original idea. Odyssey and Dave Peltz came up with this about 74 years ago. But the way they packaged it within that more blocky frame, it just made the two ball design really stand out and it was just so easy to align on the green. But the best putter this year for me, this is the Cobra King Supernova. When putters come out, it's kind of hard to talk about anything new because let's face it, you know, you can still use a putter from about 30 years ago and get good results. But this Cobra putter is incorporating 3D printing. It's also got a sick putter face, so with descending loft technology, and that helps launch the ball the same every time, no matter what your angle of attack is. The design is very, very futuristic. It just frames the ball very well. I'd say it's a little bit firm, potentially, on the feel. But apart from that, the whole design, everything about this putter, I absolutely loved. And because of the 3D lattice that they use within this putter, they're able to push the weight a little bit more to the edge of these fangs. So yet again, giving it a higher MOI, more forgiveness. So that's my choice for the putter of 2021. Now, it must be said, I have put these Adele wedges in my bag. They've only just gone in, but I've not been using them consistently enough to form a full opinion on them just yet. However, I would recommend people do check them out. So my recommendation for wedge of the year is going to be the Callaway Jaws Full Toe. Now, in testing, these performed pretty much exactly the same as my Vokey SMA. It's a wedge which I absolutely love. The design of these and the way that they look behind the ball for a high toe, full face grooved wedge, even though initially that's quite unusual to look down on, the actual versatility of these clubs around the green was absolutely superb. It just made me feel that I could play pretty much any shot around the green. I could open it, get a high shot, I could close it, get a low spinner. It was just exceptionally adaptable. And with the big toe area as well, quite forgiving. So for most golfers, if you can get used to that big toe design, this for me is the wedge of the year. I've got two winners in this category and for two different reasons. So first up is this super forgiving, super cheap Anesis 500 iron. Anesis are the golf brand of the super sports megastore chain Decathlon. And I got sent these through at the start of the year. And to be honest, I wasn't overly enamored by them. I wasn't actually looking forward to testing them. They look odd. They're massive. They've got this weird chunk missing out the toe for literally no reason that I can surmise. A huge offset. You know, this is not really my cup of tea. But then I actually started hitting them. They're a hollow headed design. They get the ball up in the air so easily. They are very long and they are very high launching. And after using them for a while, I started to notice that this leading edge in the actual face is very, very long. So when that was going down behind the ball, it just felt like I could literally throw this club into impact and the ball would come out. But they also had another surprise, and that was the price. So I tested these irons out against the G425 from Ping. In my opinion, they performed pretty much exactly the same and they were half the price. So they're some of the best performance to price clubs that I've tested in so, so long. And if you are a beginner or a high handicap and you want help getting the ball up in the air, these were a great thing to look out for. So second up, and this iron I would recommend for the majority of golfers out there, is the TaylorMade P790 2021 version. I think you can always tell when a manufacturer has an iron that they really, really like and that they know will sell well and perform fantastic because they've had 2017, a 2019, and now this year's version of the P790 iron. On the longer irons, it's got this speed pocket just behind the face. It's filled up with speed foam, which is about dampening sound and apparently hitting the ball further. It's a forge club. It looks a lot more sleeker and a lot more refined. Performance-wise against the old P790s, I mean, apart from a few loft changes and distance changes, there's really not a lot of difference. It just looks a bit better. But that is not a problem because this iron 
It's just so consistent. It performs so well, you really can't go wrong with it. The only slight criticism, if you are a better player, when you stick this behind the ball, it still looks fantastic, but it probably just goes a little bit too far with a little bit too little spin. Other than that, it's bang on. For me, it's still the Ping G425. That's it. The driver is the club that most people really want to know about. It's certainly the most purchased club in golf. And there have been so many good releases this year. But to be honest, and without apology, I have gone for the Ping G425 Max. I have to admire Ping and the way that they release clubs. They're pretty much solidly on an 18 month cycle. And this Max is aimed at the majority of golfers who want a little bit of forgiveness, who want help getting that ball up in the air. It's incredibly forgiving. It offers good ball speed. It's got a lot of features that have been on Ping drivers for a while. It's got the turbulators to help with airflow. It's got this dragonfly crown as well, where they strip out bits of titanium to redistribute that weight elsewhere in the club. It has this sliding weight attached to the back so you can have a little bit more draw fade bias. And you can also shift the loft around by one and a half either way. But basically this driver, it's only inched along within the last three years. You know, I could quite happily put a 410 in the bag and still be absolutely delighted with that performance. With ping drivers, you'd probably go further back. Like a G30, what a driver that was. So this driver is a real example of just a steady evolution over time. And that's not a criticism. All brands do this. But the way that ping just stick to their guns and just produce drivers with just slight changes, slight adjustments each time, and yet consistently make drivers that people just absolutely love. It's got to be this, Ping G45, another absolute cracker. So for more info on the clubs featured in this video, make sure you check out this link here. Give the video a like, get down into those comments. See you next time.